Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. So we've closed out 2021 and now we're into 2022. And 2021 was such a great year for reviews. Not so great for anything else. And uh, we're all still recovering from that. And hopefully this pandemic is going to be over soon. But in the meantime, let me cover or review what I reviewed in 2021. So I did a lot of reviews on microphones, two different types, broadcast slash podcast type microphones, as well as microphones that can be used for DSLR or other camera uses. And of course, keyboards and sound modules. There's others, but we're going to focus just on those categories of what I reviewed. Check the description. There's going to be links there. And um, if you're interested in anything that's on this list, check the description and there'll be links there. All right. So starting out with microphones, broadcast slash podcast slash voiceover microphones. There were seven actually that I covered. And uh, one of the up and coming ones was the Audio Technica BP40, which is an excellent, excellent mic. It's somewhere between the Shure SM7B and the Electrovoice RE20, which I'm using right now. Uh, if the two of those got together and had a child, that would be what it was. And Totally excellent mic. Check out the review. Uh, the next one was the Zoom ZDM-1. It's like a $79 broadcast slash podcast mic. Also really excellent for $79. You really can't get much better than that. There are microphones that cost much more that don't sound as good. Zoom has really done a good job with that mic. Next is the Presonus PD70, equally as impressive. It's around $130 or so, if I recall correctly. And boy, it is one heck of a mic. If that was my budget, that would definitely be the mic to go with. And I compare it with some of the Shure mics as well. It is that impressive. All right, and speaking of Shure, the new... Shure MV7, which came out last year. I reviewed that. That is an excellent mic. That is a combination XLR slash USB mic. Now, I don't typically use USB mics, but when I do use them, that's the one I'll be going with. Now, the one thing about the MV7 it's excellent, but the windscreen it comes with is not. It lets plosives come through, P's and B's. So I also did another video that suggests that you replace that windscreen with the exact same windscreen that's used on its bigger brother, the Shure SM7B. That fixes all the problems and makes it even look more like a Shure SM7B. Then there was the Presonus Revelator, a condenser mic, which I, I don't like condenser mics for broadcast podcasts in untreated acoustic rooms because that picks up everything. You drop a pin on the opposite side of the room, you're going to hear it. It picks up everything. So if your room is acoustically treated, great way to go because it also comes with software that lets you do everything. A really impressive software. But again, it's only a USB mic. It is not XLR. So keep that in mind. Then there was the Electrovoice RE20, the one I'm using right now. For my own studio purposes, it was either going to be the RE20 or the Shure SM7B. They both sound great, but for my voice, my voice, this one suited my voice better. Now, both of those have been a staple in recording studios and broadcast stations all over the world for well over 20 years. I happen to go with the RE20. For a lot of people, the Shure SM7B does wonders. 
All right, going on in the microphone category, I also covered microphones for DSLR cameras, video cameras, that kind of thing. There were three that stood out. One was the Balsang B6 bi-directional mic. It's a newcomer, but basically it can record what's in front of you and behind you. So if you're doing interviews, that kind of thing, it's great. You don't have to struggle with trying to get or capture the voice of both the interviewer and the interviewee works great. Speaking of which, the Comica Track Shot Stereo slash Mono Dual Shotgun Microphone is another one of those where you can actually point the two mics, aim them however you want. That was another excellent one. And if I was looking to buy a mic for DSLR cameras, that would be one of the considerations. And the other, which would probably be the one I would go with, is the Asden SMX30 Stereo Mono Mixable Mic, which is really cool. You could, it's a stereo and it's mono. You have a stereo mic element built in front and you can mix how much of the stereo and mono mix you want it's really cool i go into much more detail in that in my review so check that out then there were keyboards and that's what my channel is focused on so we started out the year reviewing the viscount legend 70s stage piano I liked it so much, I also became a Viscount dealer. So if you're interested in Viscount, go to my website and check it out, www.pianomanchuck.com. Viscount was the first ever digital piano to make modular editions available. So if you had the piano and you wanted a synthesizer, you bought the synthesizer module and added that on to the front. and it, it is so awesome looking. I used to think the Korg SV2 was one of the most awesome looking retro keyboards there is. Well, now with the Viscount Legend 70s, and it's kind of a draw between those two. But besides the looks, the quality is also there. I've done a very comprehensive review on that, so check that out. Then there was the Roland FP30X, and I also did a comparison of the FP30X versus the Casio PXS3000. But the PX30X, that X, introduced much more features than its predecessor, the FP30. Check that out, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Very, very impressive keyboard. Then... There was the Nord Piano 5, and that was basically a piano on steroids. I loved that one so much, I actually bought one for myself. That is one excellent piano with dual piano engines and dual sample synth engines and so much more. It is just wonderful. Check it out. Then Casio came up with a very, very, very impressive 61-key keyboard, the Casio CTS-1. And there's tons of reviews on that, all of them very positive. I haven't seen a negative review on that yet. It offers sounds in there that rival sounds in the rest of the Casio line and other keyboards in the same category. For the price that it came out as, $199, it was just a steal. Right now, 2022, that price, like everything else, went up. It's now $219 and worth every penny. Make sure you check out that review. Then Casio unveiled the new PXS 1100 to replace the PXS 1000 and while I didn't have one of those I went ahead and took a look at that in detail and compared it with the PXS 1000 and then for sound modules V3 sound 
V3 Sound has four different modules and they have a new Bluetooth dongle and the sounds on those are so good. If you have a keyboard that you love the feel on but you don't like the sounds anymore, it hasn't kept up with the times, go ahead and get this sound module. It will really improve the sounds and keep the keyboard key action that you fell in love with and don't want to let go with. I loved it so much. It was such a quality product that I also became a dealer for V3 Sound as well. Check it out on my website, www.pianomanchuck.com. Then Kurzweil introduced a new workstation, the K2700, and wow, that really rivals all the other workstations that they have with their new features. So much, I can't list that here. All I can say is check out my review on it. It's pretty comprehensive. And lastly, but not least, the last one I reviewed, this one right here, the new Studio Logic Numa X Piano GT. GT is the version I'm using here, Grand Touch. It has wooden keys and it feels fantastic. There's two other versions of this piano, another 88 key and a 73 key. Both of those use the new Fitar TP110 action. But again, that was another one that I was so impressed with, I actually went and purchased one for myself. They're not available as of this review in the USA yet. That should be happening late February, early March. So I'll be expecting my version of that here. This one is a prototype. It's being sent back in a few days because my review period with it is over. So that is basically my year in 2021 for what I reviewed and what I covered. Check the description below for links and so on and so forth. But I am looking forward to 2022 where we're going to have a lot of other stuff to review. That's going to be a great, great year, not just for keyboards, but we're also going to be doing a lot of pro audio reviews as well. And we're going to get into recorders as well. So looking forward to that. Uh, goodbye, 2021. Welcome, 2022. Happy New Year and happy holidays to everyone out there. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.